Video number three, interested parties. Any connection to your quality management system? Hello everyone, thank you for watching this video that will give you an idea about how to use the topic of interested parties to do something much more useful than just complying with ISO 9001-2015. My name is Carlos Pereira da Cruz, my background is chemical engineering and after 8 years of working in the industry I started a career of almost 25 years as consultant, trainer and auditor around ISO 9001 and ISO 14001. Later I developed a special interest in the balance scorecard that I frequently use together with ISO 9001. We believe that most of the quality management systems don't use the concept of interested parties in a way aligned with strategic direction and business results. With this presentation, I want to show how determining and using interested parties is really a fundamental cornerstone to build an effective and business-related quality management system. I'm going to tell you how I was born into the importance of interested parties and how I use them when supporting the development of a quality management system. At the beginning of the 21st century, I worked in the implementation of an ISO 9001 quality management system at a construction materials manufacturing company. A couple of years later, they called me to help them think about the future of the business. We were in August 2004. And home construction were in the first years of a long decline in my country. From 2001 until 2013, we had 12 years in a row with the number of permits for home construction always decreasing against the previous year. Top management was not sleeping and they decided that something had to be done. They made a lot of internal cuts but saving is not the same as earning. So they contacted me to facilitate strategic thinking about a sustainable future for their business. One cannot think about a strategy for the future of a business based on a blank page. Any decision about the future of a business must take into account the organization's history and its experience. Formerly occupied positions limit the possibilities of future positions. So, we started the strategic thinking around two sets of questions. Who are we? What do we know? What experiences do we have? Whom do we know? And what can we do? What can work as a competitive advantage in the new competitive landscape? Organizations should not focus too much on competition. But as we begin the process of strategic change, we need to understand where we are. Who can compete with us in the new space we can think of? And if we can have any chance at it? It was easy to conclude that the previous boom in home construction allowed the organization to live and prosper even with high costs. Now, in the recession, price competition was intensifying and they had no chance with their cost structure. Competitors sold similar products and due to very lean economic structures they could earn money selling at lower prices. Searching for differences that could support a competitive advantage they realized that they had a superior technical staff that could develop and launch into the market new products with superior performance. So they picked the opportunity for developing and launching a new product that would help building contractors do their work with more economically and in less time. They launched the product and start visiting construction sites and head offices of building contractors. Praising the performance of the new product, praising how it allowed reducing overall construction costs and how it allowed a shorter construction time. 
but the results were not what they were expecting. Sales numbers were very bad. Building contractors could not care less for performance. They only cared about price. Then, luckily, out of nowhere, two small independent building contractors for two different construction sites ordered the new product. The new product implied that the construction materials were produced in the manufacturing plant according to specific drawings and sent to the construction site as puzzle parts to be assembled there. The interaction needed to do the job allowed the organization to learn what was different with these two building contractors. Why did they bought the idea while all the others refused? The organization realized that previously they worked in Germany and learned to look beyond the price of materials and consider the whole cost of the construction. This experience allowed them to realize that what they overpaid for materials was more than offset in reducing construction costs by reducing construction time. So, the organization faced a dead end. They were promoting a set of values that customers did not value as important. When an organization cannot change its value proposition, it has to change its target customers or business model. In this case, the organization thought about which players in the construction world would be interested in this value proposition. They concluded that engineering officers and architects might be interested in their value proposition. Why? Because it would be a way of easily differentiate themselves and dissatisfy their own customers, the real estate developers, by presenting projects with lower building costs, shorter construction time, and superior performance, sound and heat uh, insulation, for example. And once the organization solution was prescribed to building contractors, hmm, um, they had no way of not buying the organization solution. So, in order to sell the product to the building contractors, the organization had to offer a superior value proposition to the engineering offices and architects. That way, they could offer competitive proposals to their customers, the real estate developers. Once the project approved, building contractors had no chance. They had to buy the product to the organization in order to meet project requirements. To develop this new business model, they realized that they had to change their commercial approach. Instead of sellers used to sell on price and argue over discounts and other rebates, they decided to contract young engineers and architects in order to have a group of technical people talking to technical people, demonstrating the technical advantages of the product solution, a kind of a peer-to-peer -peer dialogue. They decided that, that this new approach with innovative products was the future. So, new product development was no longer to be seen as a hobby, but as a fundamental activity in the organization. They had to invest and develop an R&D team. Engineering offices and architects could love their new product solution, but were afraid that building contractors could have or make problems in the construction site. To minimize this fear, the organization created the function of site support. Someone that will follow the transport and installation of the new product, helping and training building contractors people. They realized that some suppliers could be partners both for R&D and product improvement by bringing new chemicals to test, by offering testing services, by sending technical articles and offering suggestions. Universities prepare the future engineers and architects that one day will be working at an engineering office 
at a building contractor and or at an architect office. So the organization decided that instead of waiting for invitations to the technical manager to give lectures to future technicians, it will contact universities and other schools to annually develop a set of lectures, not on promotion or publicity, but on storytelling, interesting and hard cases. At the end, a business card and some promotional material will be given. The goal was that in the future, when those technicians were working and, <clears throat> and as a members of a team faced an odd situation requiring an odd approach, they could say, hey, at the university I met a guy that could help us in this situation. I believe I still have his or her business card somewhere. Should I contact him or her? They also developed links with universities to support their R&D team. Universities were also important to work with regulators because new products sooner or later have to comply with rules, legislation and standards. So, this way you can see how I was born into the power of business ecosystems. How I learned that sometimes the non-customer is more important than the customer. You can see that these interested parties were not the output of some well-intentioned brainstorming game, but the outcome of a strategi strategic approach about the market. Let us now see the relevant requirements. The organization facing the engineering offices and architects. What do they want? What do they need? A solution that improves performance, lower total cost, faster production, no negative surprises, satisfied clients. What do they fear? Fear of site delays and complications. What can we promise them? Superior performance, lower total cost, faster construction, site support. So, the engineering offices and architects satisfied are the natural uh, outcome of improved performance, lower total costs, faster construction, no problems. What about the building contractors? Mm -hmm. What do they want? A solution that presents no defects and availability. What do they fear? Fear of site delays and complications. What can we promise them? No defects, delivery on time, support on site. Satisfied building contractors are a natural outcome of no quality problems, delivery on time, no site problems. And what about universities? What do they want? A solution that gives them funds for R&D, joint projects, internship programs. What we want from them? Contact with future professional R&D partnerships. So, satisfied partners are a natural outcome of funds for R&D, joint projects, internship programs. Now, stop for a moment. We want our organization's success. Success, as a consequence, gives a financial reward. Where does success come from? From satisfied customers that pay for products and services. Well, we just saw that sometimes customers are not enough for success. We need to consider an ecosystem of interested parties. The organization can see itself as an obsessed machine devoted to one thing only, 
satisfying the interested parties. And how does the organization satisfy interested parties? Being excellent at critical processes that work to supply the inputs that will be processed by interested parties to produce desired outcomes in their own life. And again, you go back to the first video of this series and underline the importance of the process approach. Which processes are critical? A sustainable business should systematically look for meeting three goals. Gain new interested parties, satisfy interested parties, and develop the relationship with interested parties. Let us start with satisfying interested parties. What engineering offices and architects look for? It's here. Improved performance, lower total costs, faster construction, no problems. What builders look for? No quality problems, delivery on time, no site problems. And what universities look for? Funds for R&D, joint projects, internships programs. So, let us create this kind of sets of topics with something in common. No quality problems and delivery on time will be the natural result of trying to meet the objective of delivery on time. Faster construction, improved performance, funds for R&D, lower total cost and joint projects will be the natural result of trying to meet an objective called develop new products and services. And trying to meet the objective, support the site, will allow no site problems and no problems in manufacturing or no problems during the, the, the installation. More, prepare the future, an objective to promote the brand of the company, Win prescribers, an objective to meet, to communicate, to show, to network. And develop partnership, an objective to develop brand, uh, bonds with universities and critical suppliers. Now, one can draw a set of cause-effect relationships between those objectives. Prepare the future and win prescribers to gain new interested parties. Develop new product and services to win prescribers and satisfy interested parties. Delivery on time and support the site will contribute to interested parties satisfied. Developing new products and services will allow the development of partnerships that will reinforce relations with interested parties. You see, starting with relevant interested parties and their relevant requirements allowed us to determine a set of strategic objectives. An organization has to do a lot of things, but these things here are the most critical in this particular case. Imagine the kind of alignment of an organization with this approach. Organizations deliver the objectives. Organizations are sets of processes. Objectives will be met by working on particular processes. In this example, Objective 1 will be the natural result of working on processes 1, 4 and 5.
For example, something like this. The objective of preparing the future will be a natural outcome of the process communicate the brand. The impact of the process communicate the brand it's bigger on the objective prepare the future and also but and a little not not so important on the objective develop partnership. And again you see Coming from the requirements of relevant interested parties, we went to the objectives, and from the objectives, now we go to the processes. And this can be used to align an organization in such a way that you don't see normally, you normally don't see in, in a quality management system. If you have any question about interested parties, if you want to add some strategic content to your quality management system, you can send me an email. Perhaps I can help you. Our next video will be about quality policy and objectives useful for the business. Thank you.